And a fine good morning to you. Now that is a nice sweater. You've been working out, huh? Oh, man. So many broken computers and so little time. So where are you sending me first? Down the hall. Human Resources wants to see you. Oh, good. They're finally going to update that sexual harassment policy book. What's wrong with it? All that talk about hostile environments, emotional toll on the victims, cost to the private sector, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they make it sound like sexual harassment is still the problem it was 20 years ago. Well, it is. Oh, come on. Reported incidents are way down. Well, actually, they're up. Do you see anybody around here asking for a little quid pro quo? Because I don't. Well, most sexual harassment's more subtle than that. Half the time, the people that are doing it don't even know they're doing it. I think you'd have to be a little dense not to know you were sexually harassing somebody. Later. But I've had complaints, Frank. Now, you know me. I'm not like that. Just because you didn't intend harm does not mean you didn't cause harm. Man, I'm stunned. I, I, I really didn't know what I did. Uh, it was a state job. I finished transferring data to the new system, and then I gave Connie the invoice like I always do. So I've transferred the data. That was no problem. So how's life treating you with that new baby of yours? Ah, I'm in love. What can I say? Well, it shows. You know, I have to admit, I've never seen a woman lose her pregnancy weight as quickly as you have. Except where you're supposed to be big. But I mean, your stomach is like gone. You're looking good. <laughs> OK, hold it right there. Well, maybe that was a little personal. But sexual harassment? No way. Maybe not from your perspective, but what about hers? It was obvious to me that he had been scrutinizing my body. Except for where you're supposed to be big, it's incredibly invasive. What other parts of my body has he been evaluating? I don't get it. I was giving her a compliment about losing her pregnancy weight. What, I can't give a woman a compliment? You said it yourself, Frank. It was too personal. You made her feel uncomfortable. Yeah, but I didn't mean to. I understand that. But EEOC guidelines uphold a standard of proof that sexual harassment is in the subjective perception of the victim. What does that mean? It's the victim's perspective that counts. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Are you saying that just because somebody files a complaint makes it automatically valid? What happens if somebody gets upset because I look cross-eyed at them? Well, that's a good point. There's something called the reasonable person standard. Would a reasonable person consider the behavior out of bounds? Now, sexual remarks and touching may not be intended to harass, but if those actions have the reasonable effect of making the person feel uncomfortable, humiliated, embarrassed, or unsafe in their working environment, they could be ruled by the court as sexual harassment. Okay, I got it. No more comments to women about their bodies because it might make them feel uncomfortable. Thanks for pointing that out. It won't happen again. Frank? Yeah. We're not done. Now, I don't understand this complaint at all. Linda is one of my favorite clients. As a matter of fact, she's the one that turned me onto that show on cable. You know, the one where the women all sit around talking about sex. I mean, I had no idea that women actually talk like that to each other. Do you talk like that? It's for me to know. Oh, come on. I know there's such a thing as a women's locker room, so what do you really say? Frank. Oh, come on, Linda. Just pretend we're in the locker room and talk dirty to me. You can do it. It's a TV show. It comes into millions of living rooms all across America every week. She told me it was one of her favorite shows. Turn it around, Frank. Look at it from her perspective. I first mentioned that show to him when a bunch of us went out to lunch one time. I wish I hadn't. He makes a comment every time he comes here, and now every time I see him, I cringe. This is a workplace. I'm trying to respect that. So now it's a crime to talk about a TV show. What's appropriate at home may not be appropriate in the workplace. What appropriate? We're talking about a private conversation between two mature adults. No, it was a workplace conversation. Look at it another way. I mean, I had no idea that women actually talk like that to each other. Do you talk like that? It's for me to know. Oh, come on. I know there's such a thing as a women's locker room. So what do you really say? Frank. Come on, Linda. Just pretend and we're in the girls' locker room and talk dirty to me. You can do it. Now, hold on a minute. You're not saying that the workplace is the same as a place of worship, are you? Of course not. My point is you have to respect the workplace. If your behavior is inappropriate somewhere else, 
it's probably inappropriate at work. I witnessed this the other day at the university. Give me your take on this. It's the new hard drive in the software. It's all good for you. Thanks a lot. Excuse me, Miss Long? Mind if I ask you something? You can call me Tara. And I always have time for an A student. What's up? I've kind of hit the wall with this new programming language, and I'm wondering if you could possibly maybe tutor me or something? Okay, sure. Lots of teaching assistants tutor. I think we can arrange something. Great, that's great. My apartment isn't too far from campus. How about you come by tomorrow after class? Your apartment? Yeah. It's more quiet there. Private. Private? <laughs> Why are you repeating everything that I say? I, am I? I mean, I, I just thought your office would be a, a better place. Do you want tutoring or don't you? Well, maybe I don't. Like you said, I'm already an A student, right? Right now you are. What does that mean? Nothing, nothing. Just messing with you. You don't want tutoring? You don't want tutoring. Simple as that. Look, I, I didn't mean to offend you, I just... You didn't offend me. Uh, good luck pushing through that wall, and I'll see you in class. What's going on? It sounds like she was saying she would withhold his A if he didn't go back to her apartment. Yeah, but she didn't say that directly. And just because she invited him back to her apartment doesn't mean she expected him to do anything except study. Most sexual harassment is subtle. Do you think the student understood what his teacher was indirectly asking him? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You know, he seemed really upset. Well, that's the effect sexual harassment has on people, Frank. It upsets them. Okay. I get that now. Anything else? Oh, no. Come on. Don't tell me somebody didn't like the way I said their name. Not quite. Hey, little lady. I don't get it. What's wrong with calling a little lady, little lady? It's demeaning. How? How is it demeaning to call someone what she is? Turn it around. Hey, well-intentioned but clueless sexual harassing man. But that's not all I am. Exactly. Labels reduce a person to a single attribute. Calling someone little lady or young thing may be meant as friendly, but sometimes it's hurtful. But how is it sexual harassment? It suggests to a person that they are less than you are. Do it once and it's impolite. Do it constantly and it's harassment. Well, maybe I should just walk around with my mouth taped shut. That might work. Or you could try filtering your comments and behavior to avoid these situations. Filter. How? Put yourself in the other person's shoes. You never know what someone has been through or holds dear. Appreciate that your perspective is different than theirs. Okay, I appreciate that their perspective is different. Why can't people just lighten up? Frank. I'm trying to emphasize the need for you to heighten your sensitivity regarding the viewpoint of people you work with every day. Yes, you have to respect the work environment. Yes, you have to think before you speak. Yes, you have to avoid demeaning labels. If you don't, you might unintentionally make somebody's work environment a hostile place to be. What about hands off? Absolutely. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, Frank. Long time no see. Hey, Gina. How you doing? What's the matter? We're secure men, right? Yeah, right. We can hug each other, right? Yeah, I guess so. You know, I don't understand all these hang-ups about men touching men. Where I'm from, I was raised to touch, hug, kiss even. Don't worry, Frank. You're not my type. <laughs> uh, while I'm here, is there anything else I can get for you? No, I, I just wanted to say I appreciate the work you're doing around here. Top notch. I mean it. Well, actually, you know, talking about work, I've got uh, another client who's waiting for me, so I'll see you next week. Don't be such a stranger next time, Frank. Okay? You know, I really wish those people had said something to me rather than complain behind my back. This is an embarrassment for me. You make a good point. Well, hallelujah. Why do you suppose none of these people spoke up? I was angry. 
I didn't trust myself to say the right thing. I kept thinking he'd get the hint and stop, but he didn't. If I say something now, he's just gonna think I'm a wacko. She's my teacher. It's academic suicide to say to her, hey, are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? What if she said no? What if she said yes? Some people just don't get it. So why waste your breath? What about your incident with Gino? Why didn't you say anything? I wasn't sure what was going on. I was embarrassed, and I didn't want to embarrass him. But you know what? What? Next time, I'm going to say something. Because when Connie and Linda and Mildred didn't say anything to me, I assumed that everything was OK, and that they understood that I meant no harm. And what should they have said? I like working with you, Frank. And because I value that relationship, I need to tell you about something that's bothering me. When you call me little lady, it sounds like you don't think I measure up. It makes me uncomfortable when you touch me, and I'd really like you to stop. Hi. Uh, could I have a look at the policy book, please? I thought you said it was outdated. I think I need to look at it from a different perspective. Well, whose perspective's that? Yours. Look, when I made the comment about the sweater this morning, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm very sorry. OK. What are you looking for? Well, I'm trying to see if, uh... oh, yeah, yeah, here it is right here. Uh, most harassers don't intend harm. They simply fail to put themselves in other person's shoes. While heightening your sensitivity to others, always remember to think before you speak, respect the workplace, and keep your hands to yourself. Thanks. You skipped one. What's that? Learn to speak up. Thanks for understanding the effect your comment about my sweater had on me. I need to get better at learning how to express my discomfort. Most people really don't mean any harm, but unless I speak up, how are they going to know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> Later. <laughs> 